Hello everybody and welcome to my ninth Microsoft Excel 2013 tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to advance your uh, knowledge of dates by using different formulas. Uh, so there's quite a few different date formulas uh, and if we go into our functions up here uh, they're actually all categorized under the date and time category which is very convenient. And you see we've got quite a few in here. Uh, I'm just going to concentrate on a few of them, so I want to go through uh, day, month, year, uh, and I also want to go through uh, network days as well. Uh, I don't want to go through too many, just because, uh, well, there's a day, I'll be, I'll be here for days. Uh, and as, once you understand a few, you should be able to understand the rest of the formulas. Uh, and what I want to get out of these tutorials is not that you understand every formula that I've taught you, it's that you understand how a formula is constructed in Excel uh, and how the parameters work so that you're able to look at any formula and its documentation uh, and kind of apply and use it yourself because that's the trick to using Excel is understanding how to work things out rather than just knowing everything. There's no way I could I would or anyone would be able to know every single formula that they've got in their list. Um, it's just insane. The, there's ridiculous things. A, a cosh uh, returns the inverse hyperbolic cosine of a number. Uh, I think I might have actually used that before, so it's not a good example, but uh, you get the point. Off the top of my head, I wouldn't know it, that that's what a cosh does. So let's carry on with the date and time ones. So you've got three really useful date and time ones, which are year, month, and day. So if I have a list of different dates, uh, which I've just put together now, uh, if we want to put the day or the months and the years, then it's very simple to do. You just do equals day and then select the date and drop this formula down. Uh, you'll notice that comes in date format. We actually want it in general format. So just stick that to that. So you can see now what day of the month it is. So 2nd of July, it puts number 2. Uh, 30th of June, it puts 30. Uh, we've then got month. Remember, we have to put equals month. And stick that over there. And we'll change them all in a minute. And then equals year. And that comes up. So let's just change this back to general. Okay. And so now you can see we've got the day, the month, and the year, uh, and we've got them all split out. Now, this might not seem overly useful to start off with. Uh, let's just put headings to our, our columns because that makes things nice and tidy. Uh, I mean, it might not seem useful to start off with, but we, if we combine this with equals date, uh, and what this does is it takes a year, a month, and a day. So we can take this year, comma, next parameter is the month. So we can take the month, and then the next parameter is the day. Uh, and you'll see now that this comes back with the same date. Uh, and then we can manipulate these very specifically. So I can now actually just go plus one onto here, and that'll make it 2015. Uh, and you'll see that this now works and puts all of them as the right date even though some of them wouldn't normally be because they've got leap years and things like that literally puts it as the same day a year on same day a month a year on and we can do the same for month so we can do plus one on the month and that'll put it one month on on the date uh, the only exception with this one is if you say you do one month on in January uh, the 31st uh, if we change this to the 31st of January 2014, uh, you'll see it skips into March because there's not enough days in January. So it has to push those last three days over into March. Um, and so those are really useful formulas. Uh, and if you just start right typing in plus, then it wants to do that. So put a space before it. Uh, and then the other one I want to show you is network days. So if we type uh, network days, uh, so this one is a really useful one that a lot of people use. Uh, and you basically just put in a start date, an end date, 
you can highlight a list of holidays but i haven't got any to put in here so in this time period so i'll just do close bracket uh, and what it does is it just tells you how many working days that there are between two dates so we now know that between the 31st of january and the 3rd of march it's 22 working days uh it doesn't account for bank holidays that's what that extra holidays parameter is for so if you want to include bank holidays you need to put them somewhere in your spreadsheet and put them in as a range uh, but that's another really useful formula um, and then like i said there's loads more so have an explore uh, in your go into your more functions have explore around there if you've got any questions about them drop them in the comments below i'm more than happy to answer any of the questions about the different date things um, and that's going to be it for dates now in the next tutorial i'm going to go into time